This is Oz. What's Striper doing these days? Promoting still uh, Murder by Pride? Yeah, Murder by Pride album is being, uh, it's what we're tur- touring for. And um, uh, we're, we're uh, about, after, after, uh, after the holidays, we are going to start a, uh, a tour in Europe. Um, which is going to be uh, pretty much through the, the month of, uh, of January. How do you spend your days on the road? Um, you know, uh, we do uh, pretty much uh, whatever we have to do to kind of get from one show to the next. Um, you know, um, obviously there's there's uh, uh, a lot of t- travel time, and um, and there's also um, um, a lot of interviews and um, uh, events where we have to appear um, for signings and, and whatever. Uh, sometimes there's photo shoots. Uh, but as much as we can, we try to get uh, you know get around to see places if there's anything in- interesting around. Uh, days off, we'll you know spend time you know just doing some fun activities just to kind of get our brains away for you know for a little bit. But uh, I spend a lot of time practicing my guitar as much as possible while I'm on the road because uh, it's real easy to kind of get into a, a mode of not not playing. And uh, so I really have to really bone down on myself and be structured and disciplined. Do you experiment uh, a lot in the studio on your guitar sounds and stuff? Um, it, you know, um, just something that kind of comes by every time we get into something where we think something needs to change or be a little bit different, we'll, we'll work it as it comes. It's never a, a situation where we sit there and think about what different sounds we get. Obviously the striper has a certain sound and we don't want to go beyond that sound. So, um, you know, um, we just try to get the best, uh, fullest tone we can possibly get with our guitar, you know, with our rhythm guitars and then uh, everything else is just kind of like coloring, you know, coloring things. There's always, there's always been a signature striper tone right. that we don't stray from. What type of effects do you use, especially on the guitar solos, let's say? Um, not really too much of anything other than maybe, um, maybe a delay. Um, but the only thing I ever really do with my guitar tones is, is add delay to it and maybe a slight chorusing effect um, or flanging if I need to um, but um, uh, and, and obviously you know you, you have different characteristics uh, of uh, either bridge or neck pickup selections um, certain guitars you know get certain tones I mean there's certain places where I'll use a Les Paul or a Telecaster you know or something to make it sound a little bit different in certain ways but 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 you know never strain too far away from that that tone you know that we normally get so would you say murder by pride's recording technique today was different to to hell with the devil actually very similar to the right. hell with the devil album we definitely uh, approached murder by pride with the same ideas uh, uh, uh with the four tracks of guitar um you know michael playing two tracks and me playing two tracks of rhythm guitar over every song that's been the format uh for to hell with the devil i think we did the same thing with soldiers under command um pretty much did that on on in god we trust as well i think and um and then um straight away from that when we did um, other albums, um, or weren't really doing it. We didn't really do that on the first EP uh, that we had. But um, when we did uh, uh, Reborn, that that totally took a departure from the tones we normally set. Um, and then, uh, of course, this one, this Murder by Pride album, we went back to the original format. Basically, the the striper guitar tone, like the big right big wall of guitars. It's actually four tracks of guitars is what it is. Four tracks of rhythm, and uh, usually it's Michael Michael doing two tracks with one guitar, and then I do two tracks with another guitar. It seems to it seems to make it really fat. Do you guys switch guitars on the tracks, or is it like one guitar for two tracks? Um, usually one guitar for two tracks. 
and we pick the best two that match the best with uh, intonation and, and and all of that. Uh, and in certain t- in certain places, we will use the same guitar so that it doesn't like if we want to use a Les Paul for something, you know, we'll use that guitar uh, to to pretty much track everything, you know. Would you say the meet and greets you guys are doing right now are uh, good for the fans because they can actually meet you guys now, and you guys are doing that at every uh, show, I do believe? Yeah, the meet and greets are really nice for us because it kind of uh, sets up the day so that we have a schedule of meeting people before the show. And um, and then after the show, it's, it's, it's not as critical you know, for us to, we, we were doing it after show. And after you've been playing on stage, uh, tearing it up, you, you get pretty, uh, you get pretty worn out and, and stuff. So, and sometimes Michael's voice needs a lot of rest uh, after uh, after we perform. So, um, it's, it's better for us to try to do a meet and greet before the show starts. And, um, you know, and then afterwards, we're we're done. You know, after the show's over, there might be a few stragglers of people that want autographs. That you know, that that'll you know, that 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 will confront after the show. But but it's never anything real crazy, uh, like in the past. Um, so it's a lot easier to do it this way, and it's easier for us. It's easier on our on our, you know, it's it's easier on our voices and on you know getting rest and all that, you know, because sometimes if you if you go after the show, you can be really late meeting people, and, um, and that's not good for getting rest and, you know, could, could jeopardize the next show. On you guys' Reborn album, whose idea was it to make the artwork, you know, because you had two different artworks on them, on the covers? Um, you know, um, as far as I know, um, the, there was some guy at the record company that wanted to do the uh, sort of like the uh, primeval goo look with all of the kind of gooey stuff coming off our faces. And so that was something that we uh, we thought was pretty cool. That would be a great way to start it off. Kind of like the way the Matrix, you know, yeah. you see in the movie how they came to life out of that, you know, out of that gooey stuff. You know, that's kind of what we were going shooting for. <laughs> is it like um, digital effects on this, or is it actual goo you guys got on yourselves? Yeah, yeah, no, there was actually a uh, uh, kind of a, a gel type of substance that um, they poured all over us, and um, we, you know, we had to shower it all off. It didn't come off very easy. Um, I still had that stuff on me for a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know. Going to the Striper YouTube page, you guys update it like weekly and sometimes even more. Um, a lot of people participate on that YouTube Striper official page. Yeah, I, I, it seems like it's uh, the new thing to do, uh, to do in YouTube video clips. I kind of got involved. I've got my own page that I put my own videos together uh, with, and and um, and then the they post it there at the Striper site the striper youtube page and, and you know it's it's just a great way for people to see things um you know without ha- having to have to uh be concerned uh whether uh you're going to have uh, some kind of media coverage youtube allows you to do it yourself <laughs> yeah which is really great would you say murder by pride is going back to the roots in a sense and you guys are gonna keep on going like that r- route in the future? Well, you know, it's really hard to say. I'm I'm very pleased with how Murder by Pride turned out. And um and I know that uh our fans are extremely pleased with it and everyone's got great things to say about it. So I imagine that we will continue to do this type of uh sound and and tone and I'm sure there will be some variations of, of different things but 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 I, I absolutely feel like we 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 did an outstanding uh, 
uh, album, and um, we're hoping that we can continue that that you know just that flow. Why was Robert Sweet not playing on the album this time? Um, well, that's kind of a long story. Ro Robert uh, actually during the pre-production of the album, Robert, we spent ten days in Las Vegas, it's where Robert lives. Um, we we uh, we spent ten days working with Robert in pre-production uh, for the album and uh, worked on it extensively. Got everything demoed. Mm -hmm. So the record company can hear all the song ideas with all of us playing. And so Robert came up with some really cool drum riffs and, and beats and stuff. Well, when it came to doing the uh, the actual album, um, for, uh, for certain reasons, Robert could not prepare uh, for it. And he had some family stuff, family issues that came up that he couldn't, uh, he couldn't do it. So... Um, uh, so he, he uh, you know, we, we had a studio musician come in and do the do the album. And what the studio mu musician did, Kenny, his name is Kenny Arnoff, he, he pretty much wrote out all of the stuff that Robert did from pre-production. Uh, Michael sent him uh, a CD of the, uh, the music and with Robert playing, and all Kenny did was write it all out and then played exactly what Robert played with his own little feel to it. So there are, there are certain people that have heard this album that didn't know it wasn't Robert. <laughs> then it's got his touch in it then. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys getting a music video for a single on this album? Uh, we did shoot a video for the song Alive. We're hoping that it uh, will be aired soon. Thank you very much. And long live Oz Fox. Excellent guitar playing in the 80s you did. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Very good stuff.